going to do today is to cover some of the basics, but also we're going to continue talking about how money affects your day-to-day -day life and how having some understanding of maths will help make your life better. So we're going to talk a little bit about what happened to me once I started my first job. Then we're going to give you an interesting little challenge to do for which there's going to be a prize for the challenge, okay? Now, when I got out of school, I had to go to work, right? I had no backup. My mother was, you know, my parents were, I was poor, we had no money, so I got my first job. And my first job was really a horrifying job. I want you to think, what do you think my first job was? Take a guess, what do you think my first job was when I started working? A binman. A bin, not far off. What do you think, it was? not far off, what do you think it was? Street cleaner. Street cleaner? Mm, a little bit more, not quite, because I don't like working outdoors, actually. Was this on your farm? No, oh, it, you remember that I was born on a farm? Yeah. No, I didn't work on the farm. I got a job doing something that, was, that probably doesn't exist, I think, in the UK. Yes? Do you, do you work in fast food? Close. I worked in a restaurant, and my job was to clean off the tables. Mm -hmm. that, so we call that in the States a busboy. Yeah, busboy. Exactly. I worked as a busboy for two years, right? For two years, because that was the only job I could get. And when I got this job, I was making just about the following amount of money. And it wasn't a lot. I was making somewhere around uh, 12,000 pounds of the equivalent per year, working as a busboy. Now, that seemed to me a lot of money in those days. Does it seem to you a lot of money? Yes, yes or no? Yeah. Yes, it seemed to you a lot of money, until you realize that I was totally on my own. I had to do everything. So tell me, what did I have to pay first? What was the most important expense I had every month? Rent. And guess how much my rent was? For the year of month. Well, well, let's do this, okay? Excellent, excellent. So if I was earning this per year, right, how much was I earning each month? Um, Divide that by 12. Divide this by 12, so I was earning how much? 1,000 pounds a month, exactly. I was earning 1,000 pounds a month. <coughs> and how much do you think of that 1,000 pounds a month my rent costs? 600. 600. Ooh, good, good. How much? It was about 600 pounds. Oh, about 600 pounds a month. So that meant, after that, how much did I have to live on and do everything else? 400. 400 pounds a month was what I had to live on for the rest of the month, which came to about 125 pounds a week. Was that tough or what? I could live off that. What? It's not, it's probably with my mom. But I wasn't living with my mom. Remember, I was living totally on my own, and I had to take care of myself. My mom and my parents couldn't contribute any money to me, so whatsoever. So I had to figure it all out myself. Yes? How much of that money did, did you have to spend on electricity, for all, like um, gas and all that? I got an apartment that had all of those things in it. So my parents never taught me about money because my parents never had any money to teach me about it all. So I had to learn all this sort of stuff on my own. So with this, I had 400 pounds a month. What do you think my biggest expense was food. every single month? Food. Food. Food ate up because I love food anyway. But it was a huge expense, so I had to go shopping. So one of the things I became skillful at, or and my friends still talk about this, I knew all of the freebies you could get everywhere. So whether it was a free movie, a free night out at a club, I just, I became the master of the freebies. That's what I mean. I, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But then I had to go shopping for food. And so one of the things I quickly learned is that when you go shopping for food, there's some rules of thumb regarding this. One of them is you should never go shopping when you're hungry. Because if you go shopping when you're hungry, what's going to be the case? You're going to, you're going to buy a ton of food that you end up not using. So I became skillful at shopping for food and doing all of the math in my head. How did you get the freebies? The freebies, I read the local newspapers. They got little coupons, yeah. Thank you, like exactly. See, you, exactly. Like, all the you know, discounts. Because here, yeah, we got, when you pay to get on a bus, mm -hmm. um, when the ticket comes out, sometimes it's got free stuff on the Yeah, my friend as well. Yeah. Exactly, and that's exactly. In Stratford, they give out books, like, and you get, like, a special offers and I always get them. Exactly, and that's how I made the money go further. But then I became skillful at shopping. And what I did, I would give myself a budget and I would go to the supermarket with the equivalent of 20 pounds in my hands. That's all I had. 
every week. So I would walk in and I would survey the store with this 20 pounds in, your hands, in my hand. I would walk through the store and I would look and look and look and then I would determine what it was I was going to buy that week. So my diet changed basically every week. But one of the big wasters in the world is when people shop for food. And so one of the things I want you to learn to do with basic math skills is to learn how to shop for food. So today our challenge is for you to go shopping for food. Where? You have <laughs> right oh, there. I thought you meant like it's and to there's going to be a prize for the winner. <clears throat> but the challenge here is who is the best shopper and who can come closest to 20 pounds without going over it. If you go over it, you will not be eligible for the prize. But how can you come closest to 20 pounds with shopping over here and you have to do the math in your head? You get, okay, you get, you get, is it's it, okay, it's time as well then. It's, oh, of course it's time. You're giving us a list. Hmm? No. no, you get to make up the list as you go along. Yeah, but like, well, do you, so, we don't need any specific. What I love about this is that you all are asking really smart questions in advance. And Jenny here said one of the best things, that before you go shopping, it's important to do what? Have a list. Have a list, because a list will enable you to determine what you're going to buy, and then you may find a bargain there, and you may be able to save money. And like, you can tell what you definitely need, and if there's little things that you see that you might want like later on, then you can get them. Exactly, that's exactly the case, yes. So do we have to get like rice and that stuff, like staple food? Yes, you have to get staple foods, things that you would normally eat as a part of your day-to-day -day life. I love how everybody's getting ready now. So one of the first things I want you to do is to start thinking about a list. Because one, one, one of the things I want you to think really about... Excited. Yeah, I want you to think about is being creative with this, right? You make your list of what you want to buy. Yes, come on. I don't really make a list and I don't have to buy stuff. I normally go there because I already know what I more or less need for my house. In that case, you don't need a list then. Okay, okay? Right. good. Okay? If you already can do it in your head, that's fine. But remember, the winner is going to be the person that comes in closest to 20 pounds. So we're going to start this. You're going to be timed. My grandmother used to say to me, watch the mistakes that other people make so that you don't do them yourself. How long have you got? So everybody's going to get two minutes. So, everybody ready? Got your trolley? Go. And remember, you can do the math in your head. Yeah, go. Oh, okay. One, two. some for me, man. I don't push your fruits, man. And remember, part of this is to add it up in your head as you go along. I can't do that. You can either do it on paper or in your head. You just can't use the calculator. Can you lift it up? Okay. Oh, God. This man shocks. Just write down the prices. So tell me, when you were doing this, did you add up okay. the numbers as you were going along? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I always and, do that. Okay. And what do you what do you think you came at about? I think I'm at about nineteen pound forty something. Nineteen pound forty. And you do it in your head as you go shopping? Yeah. Wow, that's brilliant, brilliant, excellent, excellent. <laughs> that's American handshake. Okay. One. No, I have great confidence in you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I know I do because I think Sweet. I think you've done this in real life. And you can do it in your sleep, Omar. Wait a minute, though. Well, you can have a minute and a half. Oh, sweet. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. you can do it. Minute, yeah. Go. Notice her style. You, know, you should notice how she's doing this. She's taking a completely different approach. You can tell she does this actually regularly. Oh, fucking hell, fucking hell. Fucking hell. Oh, fucking hell. I lost count of what I fucking spent, man. Shit! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna fucking flip out in a minute, I swear down. You're gonna flip out in the supermarket? Yeah, I'm gonna go mad and I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> Make a decision. How much time does she have left? I've got two seconds left. Two seconds? That's it. Is that it, yeah? Yep, let's see. Give, a, give an estimate. Give her an estimate how I much? I don't know, about three pounds, I don't know. What do you think? 
happened to you during this exercise? Like, because I had to count how many I was putting in, mm -hmm. whilst keeping track of how much money I'd already spent in my head, it was hard and my head started to get confused. Because mm -hmm. I've so only got a little bit. Is, is, is there another way you should have you approached it? I should have written it down, that's what I should have done. Now notice, he's the first person to take a list. I can't believe how well you've done it, this. I can't believe how well they've done. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Angie, what have you observed in this experiment that's made you think about numbers a little bit differently? I learned nothing about numbers, to be honest, but I learned something about myself. And what have you learned about yourself? How much? You what? I think it's like 20 to 40. And it just messed me up for mm -hmm. And I should write stuff down. Exactly. Okay. Strategy. Tell me what's your strategy. Oh, what? I didn't need drink because I have water. I didn't need apples because I have water. Yeah, so I bought rice. Oh, good. Dry goods. Uh -huh. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> We're going to close the door on basic addition and multiplication. And depending upon who has done the best, we are going to award three prizes as a result of this, and I think it's really good that you all took an enthusiastic response to this. But now we're going to do some hard math here. A little bit difficult, but I think it's something that you need to do. So we're going to work out of these books. Once you get this down, everything is going to be easy. So let's do some, a couple of problems here on the board, and we're going to leave them on the board so that when you do your exercises, you can use these as reference points. So let's start out with some simple multiplication. If I have 4 times 8, what does that come out to be? Somebody help me. 32. 32. Bingo. OK? We have simple. That's simple, right? But let's make it complicated. Let's have it now be 45 times 81. Who in here knows how to do this? How to do this? Come on up here, Jenny, and write it on the board, OK? I OK. I used to, like, we got taught about to split it. Mm -hmm. Like what? do 45 times 80, mm -hmm. and then you put take the zero for now because zero that like, is going to equal zero. Mm -hmm. so you do five times 40, mm -hmm. and then eight times four. 32. 32. 32. 32. 36. Mm -hmm. And then you just times it by the one, so it's just going to equal that. And so what's going to be the answer? 3,600. 3,000. Well, you forgot it. That's 3,600. But here, this is 81. So you have to add in what to it? You've got to times that by 1, no? It's, what, times 45 by 1. So it comes uh, out to be? Oh, yeah. And then you've got to add 45 onto that. Exactly. So it's 3,645. OK, exactly. So you got the right answer. But let's do it the classic way. What's the classic way? You take 5 times 1, which comes out to be what? 5. 5. 1 times 4, which comes out to be? Talk to me. 4. four. Four, and then you shift over with the line up here. Exactly. And so exactly. So four times five comes out to be? Talk. Twenty. No, four times I'm sorry, eight times five comes out to be? Forty. I know I did. And then you add the four up here, and this comes out to be three sixty. So you come out to be three sixty forty-five. Easy, isn't it? Okay? Let's add one more complication to it, and then I'm gonna have you do a couple on your own. Let's make it a decimal. We have 45.4 now times 81. Who wants to do this one? Go for it. Pay attention. We're going to give you the, put you on your own in a minute. OK, let's help you. 1 times 4 comes out to be what? Shall I put that there? Yep. 4 and then 1 times 5 comes out to be? And 1 times 4 comes out to be? 32. Put down 3. So put down the 2. Put down 2. Put it, write down 2 right there. And then you bring up the three up here. OK? Exactly. Eight times four comes out to, eight times five comes out to be? 40. 40. Plus three comes out to be? 43. 43. So write the three here. 
and carry the 4 up here. 8 times 4 comes out to be? Plus, plus 6 comes out to be? 6. 38. 38. So write it over here. Now, don't you just add the 4? Hmm? Yeah, no. So it was 4, sorry. It was 4. 36. Yep, my bad writing. So add in 36. And what did this come out to be? 3,732. Exactly. Is that right? Three, six. I can't do that. But nonetheless, you, 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 did, you did okay with this. You want to do it on your own? Yeah. Okay. Stay up here and do it on your own. So now what I want you all to do, I want you to do some basic, basic multiplication. Can I do it, I do it the way that I did it? You can do it anything you want to right there, okay? So I want you to turn in your books to page eight. And I want you to do the questions on those pages. And they're really simple, and all I want you to do is try. Right, right. Excellent. Uh, one too many zeros here. Right. Right. Ex excellent. Bravo. Excellent. Right, 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 right. Go on. A plus. A plus. Good for you. Okay, I know, I know everybody's enjoying the exercise and the challenge, but for the last couple of minutes, we're going to have Jazzy here talk a little bit about the importance of maths and numbers and music. You need to learn that it applies to a lot of different areas of life, so the floor is yours. It's fundamental in every walk of life. In addition to the, um, the music business, you'll, especially some of you, if you ever release records, you'll be given percentages. And those percentages you might want to think about in terms of your royalties, that's going to need calculation, as well as your bank account, to know that people ain't ripping you off because that's um, you know, something that comes up a lot in the music industry. And nowadays, you're, you're very much in charge of the industry yourself rather than having managers. But you will need accountants, and you will need to measure percentages. Um, so that's why it's really important to do maths. And I thought it was important for me to come in today. And thank you, Alvin, for giving me two minutes to explain that. And um, hopefully, you'll take that on. But I can see through some of your work what you're doing that you're taking that very seriously, and um, I'm pleasantly surprised. They're really well focused. They really are enjoying it. It's just so satisfying for me. And uh, you all have made me very, very happy today. You have made me enormously happy. But we have to announce the prizes. So, oh. yes, the prize, <laughs> yes, it's fantastic. We have, well, first of all, we have to give Carl uh, a prize for being the first person to volunteer. Okay, great. The winners, we don't have one winner, we have two. We have two winners who nailed it on the head. Well, they got 20 pounds. They got 20 pounds, spot on, spot on. And the two winners are Carl and Michael. No, Emmy. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And your prize is that you get to, each of you, get 20 pounds of food over here and it's all yours. Oh really? Yes, it's all yours, 20 pounds each, and it's all, no, wait, 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 Carl, you know, wait, wait, wait. Now, I think that it's really important to award a prize to the person who got, who came in under budget. Because I think coming in under budget, ever so slightly, is a good thing. And the person who came in, a lot of people came in way over budget. One person came at 38.22. Yeah, that's way above that. But the person who shopped most judiciously, who came in under budget, but bought some interesting things, like everybody else, quite diversity was Aisha. Bravo. I'm so proud of you, and so I'm going to give Aisha one of my signed books. You get a book, and you get to choose one or two things from over here for yourself. I'll go over your answers, but you all have done a great job, and I'll see everybody tomorrow, and let the winners choose.